ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶುದ್ಧ ಸ್ಪಡಿಯ ಸಂಕಾಶ ಶುದ್ಧ ವಿದ್ಯಾಪ್ರದಾಯಕ ಶುದ್ಧ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಚಿದಾನಂದ ಸದಾ ಶಿವಮಹಂ ಶ್ರೇಯೇ ಶಂಖಾರೂಪೇಣ ಮಚ್ಛಿತ್ತ ಪಂಕೀಕೃತಮೂಜ್ಯ ಕಂ ಕರೀಯ ಸಾಮಯ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯಮಾಶ್ರೇ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಮಾರಂಭಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಭಾರತೀ ಕರುಣಾಪಾತ್ರ ಭಾರತೀ ಪದಭೂಷಣ ಭಾರತೀ ಪದಮಾರೂಢ ಭಾರತೀ ತೀರ್ಥಮಾಶ್ರೇ ವಿದ್ಯಾವಿನಯ ಸಂಪನ್ನ ಭೀತರಾಗಂ ವಿವೇಕಿನ ವಂದೇ ವೇದಾಂತ ತತ್ವಜ್ಞ ವಿಧುಶೇಖರ ಭಾರತೀ ಮಾಲಾ ಸುಧಾ ಕುಂಭ ವಿಭೋದ ಮುದ್ರ ವಿದ್ಯಾವಿರಾಜತ್ಕರ ವಾರಿಜಾತ ಅಪಾರ ಕಾರುಣ್ಯ ಸುಧಾಂಬುರಾಶಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಾರದಾಂಬಾಂ ಪ್ರಣತೋಸ್ಮಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ವಿ ಸಾ ದ ಪರ್ ದ ಮೇನ್ ಲಿಟ್ರೇಚರ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರಲ್ ಲಿಟ್ರೇಚರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರಸ್ಥಾನತ್ರಯಂ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಕರಣ ಗ್ರಂಥ ಪ್ರಸ್ಥಾನತ್ರಯಂ ಕನ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ತ್ರೀ ತ್ರೀ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಶ್ರುತಿ ವೇದ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ಲಿ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಪ್ರಸ್ಥಾನ ಸೊ ತ್ರೂ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ವಿ ಲರ್ನ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಬೈ ವ್ಯಾಸಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಎ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಋಷಿ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪಾರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಈಸ್ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಬೈ ವ್ಯಾಸಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪ್ರಸ್ಥಾನ ಸೂತ್ರ ಸೂತ್ರ ಗ್ರಂಥ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸೂತ್ರ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ನ್ಯಾಯ ಪ್ರಸ್ಥಾನ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಲಾಜಿಕ್ ಆರ್ ರೀಸನ್ ದೀಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರಸ್ಥಾನ ತ್ರಯಂ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ತತ್ವಬೋಧ ಪ್ರಕರಣ ಗ್ರಂಥ ಪ್ರಕರಣ ಗ್ರಂಥಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆನಿ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಬೈ ಆಚಾರ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗುರುಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನಲ್ ಪರಂಪರ ಅಂಡ್ ತತ್ವಬೋಧ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ಸಚ್ ಪ್ರಕರಣ ಗ್ರಂಥ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಸಾ ಅಂಟಿಲ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ತತ್ವಬೋಧ ಈಸ್ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಪ್ರೋಸ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರೋಸ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ first verse and the last verse are in poetic verse form whereas all the other things are in prose composition it begins and ends with the verse in between all are in prose form so tatva bhoda starts with a prayer verse vasudevendra yogendram ಜ್ಞಾನ ಪ್ರದ ಗುರು ಮುಮುಕ್ಷೂಣಿತೋಧೋಧೀಯತೆ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ವಿಚ್ ಅಪಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ತತ್ವಬೋಧ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಎ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಟು ಭಗವಾನ್ whether it is worldly or a religious or a spiritual activity any activity any actions whatever be the activities we always start with a prayer prayerful attitude is the uniqueness of our indian culture for us prayer is not confined to a particular place or time we believe our whole life should be carried out with a prayerful attitude and we should learn to convert every activity into a worship into worship of lord for us work is worship for our life also is worship of lord see uh, in ex- for example navaratri puja at the end of navaratri puja we celebrate ayudha puja this ayudha puja nothing to do with religious but every instrument we use at home is worshiped on that particular day like mridangam veena everything even a bus driver or a car driver before starting their work they always pray 
and then start their vehicle. They may be threatening a lot of pedestrians when they are driving on the road. That is different issue. But before starting their activity on a particular day, any particular day, any day, they start with prayer. And also, we all have a general habit. Whenever we take vehicles out for uh, our purposes, we go a little forward and then take the vehicle in the reverse to go out of the parking lot. So, this is general habit. The idea is always we take step forward. We go forward. That is the attitude. In our tradition, we believe success always depends upon two factors. The first one is our own sincere effort, which is called prayatnam. Without our effort, nothing can be carried out. And second most important factor is Ishwara Anugraha, grace of the Lord. All other factors should be favorable to us in order to have a successful project. I can sow the seed of a plant in my garden, but the rain should come on time. It is not in my hand. I can plan to go to a particular place for attending a meeting or for a wedding or for any function, anything. But on my way, what are the diversions ahead, we don't know. Nowadays, with a lot of infrastructure projects going on, we don't know when it will be diverted and it will be a loop. We, can, we will keep on going around and around. We don't know when we will reach that particular destination. So these things are not in our control. Many things not under our control. All such extraneous factors, together we call them as daivam. Unpredictable and uncontrollable factors. For example, there was a cyclone Mandos which struck in Chennai few days back. Nowadays, we can predict the direction, the wind velocity, the time, when the cyclone will strike, what particular place it will strike, everything we can predict to an almost near accuracy. But nevertheless, cyclone cannot be controlled. Previously, some years back, cyclone could not be even predicted also. It was both unpredictable and uncontrollable. But thanks to scientific advancements, now, cyclone can be predicted, but still, we cannot control them. Earthquake continues to be both unpredictable and uncontrollable factor. We call all such factors as daivam. And that daivam must be favorable to me. We may, some people may call it luck, good fortune or good luck, etc. But for us, we don't use these words. We call them as Ishwara Anugraha. And since both my effort and Ishwara Anugraha are more important, very, very important and equally important, that is also very important, they, both of them are equally important. We decided to use both. Effort has to be taken care of by me. I have to put forward my effort with whole heart. But how to take care of, how to handle the daivam, unpredictable, uncontrollable factors, I have left it no choice but to pray Bhagavan. Therefore, I offer prayers to God, which have the capacity to alter these extraneous situations in, favorable, in, in my favor. Therefore, the author of this book, Tattva Bodha, he is also anxious because he has a project at his hand. That is, he has started writing the text called Tattva Bhoda. He has to complete the work on time. Therefore, he is offering prayers to Bhagavan. For us, the students and seekers, we don't have the problem of writing the book, but we have other issue, like we have to complete study of this book and we have to understand what is taught in this book. For us, this, this is my project. The first verse is 
मंगल श्लोकम और इन्वोकेटरी श्लोका प्रार्थना श्लोका वी रिवियर अवर गुरु एज अ मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ लॉर्ड ईश्वरा और वी ट्रीट अवर गुरु एज अ ब्लेसिंग गिवन बाय द लॉर्ड देर फॉर इन अवर ट्रेडिशन गुरु इज ईक्वल टू भगवान देर इज अ वेरी पॉपुलर एंड वेरी कॉमन श्लोका विच एवरी वन ऑफ एस विल चैंट एवरी डे एट होम गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम गुरु ईज ईक्वल टू गाड देर ईज नथिंग डिफरेंट बिटवी गुरु एंड गाड देर फोर फॉर दि सीकर एंड दि आथर आफ दिस बुक् गुरु एंड गाड आर वन एंड द सेम ऑफन प्रेयर टू लॉड ईज रीप्लेस्ड बै प्रेयर टू गुरु फॉर अस ईश्वर प्रार्थना is equal to guru prarthana this author is also offering namaskarams to that is prostrations or salutations to his guru vasudevendra his the author's guru name is vasudevendra this text is written by the disciple of vasudevendra and in this text it is not given as to who is the author of this particular text name is not known to us but he should be an acharya shankara acharya coming from our tradition coming in our tradition for this author his guru's name is vasudevendra an natwa what does he do the author offers pranams namaskara prostrations to his guru along with the author we also offer our prayers to vasudevendra his guru and who is this guru yogi indram my guru that is the author says my guru who is vasudevendra who is yogi indra a great yogi the word indra when added with one word when when indra is coming as a suffix to a particular word which means shreshtah a great simendra means a great lion narendra manushyendra means great human being among the human beings he is great he is narendra yogi is yoga has several meanings yoga has several meanings and yoga asana also is one such meaning but here yogi in this context yoga means self knowledge therefore yogi is one who imparts self knowledge to us a person that is a gnani a yogi indraha means a great gnani among the gnanis my guru is great incidentally vasudevendra vasudeva also means lord krishna who is our bhagavan indirectly namaskara goes to lord krishna who is also a great teacher guru remember bhagavad gita so there is a prayer in bhagavad gita vasudeva sutam devam कंसचाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु ईज नन अदर दैन जगद्गु एंड वाज वाट इज दिस गुरु वासुदेवेंद्र योगींद्र वै ई कंसिडर हिम टू बी अ ग्रेट गुरु बिकॉज ज्ञान प्रदम गुरु मै गुरु हेज गिवन मी दिस सेल्फ नॉलेज my guru has blessed me with this self knowledge people go to guru for various purposes for several purposes but most will be asking everything except gnanam but my guru has taught me self knowledge therefore he is gnanapradam guru for him i offer my namaskara 
and what knowledge he has imparted atma jnana pradam gurum here the word atma is not mentioned in this shloka but we can add because knowledge is self knowledge jnanam atma jnanam here the author also the author hints a very important point which we all have to note this author by saying that he offers namaskara to his guru who has given him self knowledge by saying that he hints very important thing this author did not get self knowledge by self study this is very important for all of us i never attempted my own by my own sadhana i took the guidance of my guru without which one will be misguided or confused so he had learned this knowledge from his guru this is how this self knowledge has been coming down for various ages guru shishya parampara for many many years generations after generation it is coming only through guru shishya parampara so we should learn that one should not attempt to understand or to learn self knowledge by ourselves <clears throat> we can never understand anything see for example in sports tennis or football or cricket anything requires a guide for better performance what to talk of the highest pursuit of self knowledge without guru no one should attempt to gain self knowledge this is an important point which he hints we all have to learn so for that jnana pradam gurum natva i offer my salutations and what am i going to do what is my project work tatva bodha abhidiyate i am going to teach i am going to that is the author of this book is telling i am going to teach i am going to impart the knowledge of real self my real nature tatvam is what my higher nature my superior nature my real nature is tatvam bodaha means knowledge so self knowledge what we see with our eyes or what we perceive with our sense organs may not reveal the facts for example every day we see sunrise and sunset so we all we can we can see we have the experience that sun rises at in the east and sets in the west this is our experience but what is the actual fact sun does not rise or sun does not set only the earth is revolving sun is stationary so the fact is entirely different from our experience therefore we need to understand this fact very important and this is how the scientists also entered the inquiry of the creation of the whole universe initially they made lot of research and they said combination of elements elementals is the creation initially they said only elements universe means combination of elements later on they said no no it is not combination of elements it is combination of molecules then after few years they changed it is not molecules but it is all made up of atoms then further their studies reduced to it is not atoms but sub atomic particles now they say finally energy in motion so their thesis their research into the whole universe is finally now presently they may change later also energy in motion according to modern scientists the true nature of the solid tangible wall is nothing but intangible energy this is what they say energy cannot be seen energy cannot be touched it cannot be touched by us but the fact of the matter the experience of the matter is i can touch the wall i can see the wall therefore what i see 
is totally different from what is the actual fact. Similarly, what I am seeing that you is not real you, but it is something different. This is what our Jnana Yoga, this is what our self-knowledge teaches us. And also the word Guru, the very word Guru who means one who is the light which removes the darkness. Ru means light, Gu means darkness. Gukaras Pandhakaro Vai Rukaras Tan Nivartakaha Andhakara Nivartitvat Guruhu Ityabhidiyate is the definition of Guru. That is, person who removes darkness from my heart is Guruhu by lighting up the knowledge, self-knowledge. Local light will remove the darkness, external darkness, whereas self-knowledge only will remove the internal darkness called ignorance, ajnanam. Guru lights up this lamp of wisdom and he removes the ignorance, darkness from my heart. Therefore, Guru means a person who removes darkness which is Ajnanam from my heart, from my mind. Now, this whole teaching is for whom? Who is the target audience? He, Mumukshunam Hitarthaya for the benefit of those people who seek self-knowledge, who seek moksha through self-knowledge. Hitarthaya means for the benefit of, for the advantages, for the advantages of Mumukshu. Mumukshu is a seeker of self-knowledge through which he will get moksham. Therefore, the simple meaning of this whole verse is, I am going to impart or share or transfer the self-knowledge through which a spiritual seeker will get freedom which is moksha. And do you remember what is moksha? Fivefold benefits of self-knowledge put together is called moksha. We saw this fivefold benefits of self-knowledge in the previous sessions. I will just go through briefly. Jignasa Nivartihi, the first benefit of self-knowledge is Jignasa Nivartihi, that is intellectual satisfaction because of a removal of my basic questions, basic quest or urge to know about my real nature, my real self. Fundamental questions are answered by understanding my real nature, by going by under, by going through my self-knowledge. So, this is the first benefit. The second benefit is Vidyananda Pratihi, the joy born out of discovering our true nature, our higher nature, our real nature. This is the highest joy one can ever imagine. And this joy is permanently available with us all the time. The self-knowledge teaches that I am the perennial source of ananda, happiness, which is always available, like a UPS, for example, uninterrupted power source. Generally, a knowledge cannot be stolen by a thief. Knowledge cannot be taken away by governments by way of tax or levies. Knowledge cannot be taken away by our relatives or friends without my concurrence. In fact, knowledge increases as and when we read more or as and when we share our knowledge with others. When the knowledge, this is the basic features of knowledge, what to talk of Atma Jnana. It is always available with us and it gives a great joy, which is Vidyananda Praptihi. The third one is Karpanya Nivrtihi. Because I have this Vidyananda with me all the time as uninterrupted power source, always as a backup. I have a standby source of Ananda. I am not a desperate for happiness born out of worldly pleasures. 
if worldly pleasures or worldly objects give me happiness well i will enjoy that if they don't give me happiness then also i am happy because i know about my true nature the fourth one is aghata nivritti this self knowledge and the joy born out of self knowledge serves as a wonderful cushion to take all impacts caused by various worldly problems and experiences it is like an insurance or a shock absorber against many traumas or painful experiences faced by our general day day to day life we can say this is psychological shock absorber last one is dakshata prapti once you are not shocked by life experiences your mind is relatively peaceful it is poised it is very calm therefore you can perform better than a disturbed mind better emotional quotient will help a person perform better his iq will be far better that is intelligence quotient a mind which is peaceful which is calm all the time can come out of any unprepared situation very well without much of problems therefore increase in efficiency or increase in proficiency in whatever activity we do will be gained by this self knowledge so these are the five fold benefits that one gets by self knowledge these five fold uh, benefits put together is called moksha moksha means this is the benefit of all these five fold factors is moksha is self knowledge because of the self knowledge with this i conclude this session we will go through the text proper from the next session पूर्णमद पूर्णमीद पूर्णा पूर्णमुदच्य पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरि ओम